Mungo National Park in New South Wales. It's one of Australia's natural wonders. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it's the site of one of the most important scientific discoveries probably in our lifetime. So I've travelled out to Lake Mungo to discover why these dried up lake beds are so special. Who exactly is Mungo Man and why is he so important? And I want to find out if this part of Australia is actually as peaceful and as tranquil as I've been told it is. Dura traffic, Ekahang Zulu is rolling runway 18, downward departure, climbing 3,500, tracking to the northeast, Mildura. Seven hundred caps is available. Left turn. Starting to head right out into the desert here now. You can see the uh, ground starting to get a lot redder. I always like this part, this is kind of the gap between regional Victoria and outback Australia. And we're actually in New South Wales now. We've flown over the border when we left Mildura. I just love that that would have taken an hour and a half to drive from Mildura, or in our case, 16 minutes after we departed. Marco National Park. Mungo Lodge, Cirrus Echo Yankee Zulu turning final, runway 24, full stop, Mungo Lodge. Echo Yankee Zulu is back tracking, runway 24, Mungo Lodge. Oh wow, it's busy. Okay, Yankee Zulu, you got some friends. Because I flew into Mungo National Park and don't have a car when I'm down here to actually look around the place, the team at Mungo Lodge, where I'm staying, very kindly offered to loan me their vehicle. So now I'm a tour guide. kilometers an hour, I'm scared to go any faster just in case this whole thing rattles itself apart. I love this little van, this is brilliant. Got a map. Wondering why I don't have any drone shots in this video. Anyone know what these are? Is that a melon? Somebody's eating that one. You can still see the evidence of some of the rivers that are flowing off the hills behind us into what was Lake Mungo, but that dried up. They estimate around 18 to 22,000 years ago. 
since that point there's never been water here it's all just been a dry lake bed like it is today Unauthorised access beyond this point. To venture on the Lunette, you must have be under the supervision of a licensed tour guide or have written approval from the area manager. Um, so I can't go up there on my own? Okay, no, that's okay. What time does that leave? 6.30 and do you have any space on that one? You do? Alright. Yeah, if you could put me down for that and um, I better bring your van back. It was here in Mungo National Park back in 1974 when a geologist by the name of Jim Bowler was out walking and saw what he thought was a rock in front of him glistening in the sun. As he got closer, it actually turned out to be a human skull. The rest of the skeleton was unearthed, the remains were taken to Canberra, and they were carbon dated to being 42,000 years old. Just think about that for a second, 42,000 years before now. Say we take now, the time that I'm recording this, and we draw this line in the sand, this is today. Let's go back to when mobile phones were invented, the internet, the car, even go back say 2,000 years to here, depending on what you believe in, but the birth of Christ. If you want to go back 40,000 years, you have to draw a line about here. Now I'm fascinated by science and I think a discovery like this is really important to us as a human race, but of course there are some ethical questions about removing human remains and taking them to Canberra for storage and scientific discovery over 40 years. Now just a short time after recording this piece you're watching on what happened to the remains of Mungo Man, I got talking to the team at Mungo Lodge where I was staying and they told me that the only people in the National Park who should tell the story of Mungo Man are those in the Aboriginal communities themselves. And yet, here I was, a middle-aged white man who flew his own aircraft into the middle of a sacred site, sitting here telling a story on YouTube that I, well, I didn't really have the right to tell. So I've decided to respect the fact I'm an onlooker here and I'm not the storyteller. And I've decided to leave out what actually happened to Mungo Man in this video. Now, of course, you can easily Google what happened to Mungo Man and find a bunch of information on it if you want. But for this channel and for me, I'd rather just say, if you want to hear the real story, I think you need to come here yourself and hear it from those who are actually part of the story. You can't go down unless you pay. These guys are paid for a oh, tour. Brilliant. I didn't know how much is it? The third layer is this stand here, behind you here, or behind me, and that's, at, that's the uh, Zanke layer, and that's at 30,000. And when we get on top of the germs and see a different colour clay, we'll get it, like a greeny tinge of colour clay, that's the youngest layer, and that's a rumper layer, and that's at 20,000. So, what I'm the dating is I'm giving is just an average dating of what we think the age of the soil is. As if this didn't look like an alien planet enough. Look at this. Look at the moon. It's like something out of Star Wars. Mungo Lodge traffic, Cirrus Echo Yankee Zulu is taxiing for a departure on runway 16, Mungo Lodge. Temperatures and pressures are good, airspeed's increasing on both.
I've got to do one flyover at Mungo Lodge. This is why these trips take so long. If you did enjoy this video, do give it a like and please feel free to share the link on your social media platforms. It really helps me to see the videos getting out there. And thank you as always for watching. I really enjoy having you flying along with me on these adventures and I'll see you in the next video.